If you've been wanting to use Chrome with stamping, then this one's going to be for you. What's up, Nail Crew? It's Nicole, your fellow Nail Obsessed DIYer. We are doing something I have been wanting to do for so long. I tried doing Chrome stamping before, and it was kind of a mess. Uh, actually, it was a huge mess and a disaster, if you saw the video from the other week. But I had a fresh outlook and some new ideas talking to some of my friends who stamp, and we're gonna try it again today. You're gonna be so excited because we will see, you will get to see that it actually works and you don't need any gels to do chrome stamping. First, they're gonna start with the base. And I wanted to do this like kind of anti-Valentine's Day Manny, black and gold instead of just like pink or red. And also, if you know me, you know that I am a huge Steelers fan. So anytime I get to wear black and gold, I'm all about it. Doesn't matter whether it's football season or not. I mean, technically it's, you know, still football season now, but I like to think about this as like my anti-Valentine's Day Manny. So the yellow that I'm using is a fine reflective glitter. It's like a yellowish gold. The yellow is called Tommy Want Wingy, and then the black with gold shimmer in it is called Fat Guy in a Little Coat. <laughs> if you are Chris Farley fans, you know exactly what this is from. Anytime that I'm dipping a fine glitter, or really any glitters, flakes, or foils, I like to make sure that I pour it into a dip cup. If you don't have these little dip cups like I do, you can use a cupcake liner. Just be really careful because they spill easily. I mean, I pretty much spill everything, like regardless of what I have it in, but I spill less with these dip cups. You wanna put your glitter into the cup here and then shake up the glitters. So by shaking up and like tapping the dip cup on the surface that you're using, it allows all the glitters to come up to the top, especially when you're using a fine glitter. This one really doesn't have much clear in it. Like it's very, very full of glitters, but I like the certain pieces to come up to the top. Like I want the most reflective pieces up at the top. So when I do it a little, give it a little shake and a little tap against the surface, then those glitter pieces come up to the top. I can apply my dip base thinly on my nail and then lay my nail flat onto the glitter so that it picks it up. I do that whether I'm using glitters, flakes, or foils. It has just been the best method for me to get great coverage on both dips and not have to worry about pouring over. So on my thumb, I wasn't really paying attention on the first dip. I can't remember if it was the first or second dip. Like I can't tell by looking at the video on either the first or second dip. I really forgot to put much base on the right side of my thumb. So I had to put a little bit more base down there and dip my finger back in because I didn't get much of the glitter and I wanted it to look even for the rest of my nails. Since all of my nails have like glitter shimmer on them, I decided that I wasn't going to do the clear dip powder until the end. So if you're like me and you're really messy and you're working with a shimmer or a solid and you wanna make sure that you don't get any glitter contaminated in it, you can go through your solids and your shimmer nails first and then top with clear dip powder, activate them, and then work on your glitters. Since these colors were black and gold and the black was had the gold in it, I wasn't really worried about getting any of the fine reflective glitter into the black since it already had a gold shimmer to it. So I thought I'm just going to wait and do the clear until the end. Now, <laughs> if you are like me and you tend to be a little bit messy when you dip black, no matter even if it's not a staining color, it is easy to get like in your cuticle. So this black really didn't stain on any of my nails, but my hands are so dry that I had to very quickly go around and get any unstuck from my cuticle area. And even at that, like some kind of almost like snuck under my cuticle. So when I wore my next color, I noticed that a little bit of black was coming out from like kind of under my skin. I don't even know how, like it must have been when I pushed my cuticles back, like some black got under there, but it's okay, it just like comes off once my nails grew out a little bit. Part of why colors tend to get stuck on my skin is because my hands are so insanely dry. You can't tell that much in this video, but some of my videos you can really see like how crazy dry my hands are. Once you're finished dipping all the colors, then you can go through and you can apply your clear dip powder. Now, my clear dip powder is very contaminated with glitters and I still haven't cleaned it out yet. It's been a couple weeks since I've been thinking I really need to clean my clear and have I done that yet? Uh, nope, <laughs> I just keep forgetting. And then I go to do my nails. I'm like, well, I don't wanna do it right now. I, I would just wanna do my nails. So I figured I would just pour it into the dip cup and lay my nails flat into it because it's already contaminated with a bunch of glitters. I just might as well keep going. One thing I do try to do 
to keep my clear less contaminated is I try to brush off the excess clear powder back into the dip cup that I was using. This way I don't get any more glitters in the clear than I absolutely have to from when I like either dip my nail or pour it over. That's just helped me to contaminate my clear a little bit less. So if you're somebody who is really contaminating your clear and you're struggling with that, do not brush off your clear dip powder like the excess once it starts to dry. Don't brush that off back into the clear powder. Brush it off somewhere else. Once you are done with doing all your clear, then you can go in and do your activator. And when I'm activating, I like to do two layers on each nail. So I'll dunk the brush into the bottle, slop it onto the nail, dunk it, <clears throat> dunk it back in the brush, and put it back on my nail again before I move to the next one. I like to make sure that my nails are like really activated and hardened all the way through. There was a Manny a while back that I didn't put enough activator on and then let my nails harden. So I feel like I got paranoid after that, that my nails weren't gonna harden with the activator. And I like to make sure that I do two dips of the activator onto my nail so that it like it's definitely, definitely hardened. I did my buffing, shaping, and filing off camera so we can jump right into the fun nail art. I always wipe my nails off with isopropyl alcohol before I go in and do any nail art. The first thing that you wanna use is the some kind of sticky base over your entire nail. And I used the Maniology sticky base on my entire nail and I let that dry. Then I got everything ready to do my chroming. And once the sticky base was dry, I did a thin layer of this matte top coat. It's just a nail polish top coat. This way the chrome wouldn't stick to anything but just the stamp. Then you can go through and you wanna apply your chrome powder onto your stamp. Now I did a much bigger area of chrome than I actually needed to. I'm not really sure why. I knew I was only stamping a really small little heart, but you know, sometimes I just <laughs> go a little overboard. Now the first time I stamped, when I was cleaning off the excess, <laughs> the excess polish I um, around the little heart, I accidentally used the lint roller and rolled over the heart too. So I had to clean off my stamping plate with some acetone and then I used ice purple alcohol and I redid it. And I didn't go as crazy with the chrome this time. I applied like an appropriate amount of stamping polish. So your stamping polish, you want to cover your image, but not be so much that it drowns it. And then you wanna scrape off not all of it, but you wanna scrape it enough so that when you roll the stamper over, you're just picking up the image. And then you can go in with your lint roller and and roll off any excess stamping polish that's on your jelly stamper and then you just apply the stamp right onto your nail you roll it right on where you want it and since we did a matte top coat underneath and I let it dry just the chrome stamp stuck so I was super super excited about that and I still went around with a little bit of alcohol around my nail just to make sure there was no like stamping powder on my nail I cleaned up a little bit around it it was kind of hard to tell because the black that I'm using has a gold shimmer in it which is a similar color to the chrome powder the chrome powder that I'm using is called queen bee it was a perfect match to do like this gorgeous gold with my gold and with my golden yellow and black nails once that stamp totally dries then you can go in with a layer of smudge free top coat and once i'm finished with that i like to then let my nails like really dry and do my dip top coating before i go in and apply a layer of a super shiny nail polish top coat so when you're using dip top coat with stamped nails and you wanna make sure that your timing is correct, you basically just pretend like you're doing the nail that has stamping over it. So I'll go through all of my regular steps and just pretend like I'm doing my ring finger. And that's what you can do so that you can get your dip, coat, dip top coat timing correct. Whatever liquids you're following, make sure you follow their instructions. All the dip liquids are a little bit different in the timing of top coating. So it's really, really important that you follow each company's top coating process. If you're watching and you're like, Nicole, I am so not ready to stamp and chrome and do all that yet. I just need help with basic application. Make sure you check out the first pin comment. It has a link to my ultimate dip nails 101 guide. It's over 45 pages of everything you need from prep to application to removal, absolutely no gatekeeping all in one place that you can print out and refer to 
over and over. And I also always keep it linked in my description for anyone that needs more help with dipping. Now I'm gonna keep going with applying my dip top coating. So I make sure that I continue for each step to pretend like I'm doing my ring finger. And once I'm finished with all my dip top coat, then I go back in with my nail polish top coat and float that over the stamp nail that had the Maniology smudge free top coat. And if you wanna learn more about stamping, make sure you check out this next video. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Crew.